please welcome uh, Pierre Montagano. He is here um, as business development director for Code Ocean. They're a Cornell Tech incubated startup. Thanks, Pierre. All right, thanks. I'm also here with my colleague uh, Shahar sitting in the back. Um, and so uh, just to give you a run through, Code Ocean is, is a cloud-based executable research platform, um, really tackling the, the, the problem of reproducibility, which we're all so familiar here. And uh, it allows uh, researchers to deposit uh, both their uh, code and uh, data and input and in, in everything that's really needed to uh, execute um, their, um, and what we've been calling an algorithm, but just to create a, a computational sort of environment um, uh, that is executable in the cloud. Um, and, and we're familiar with the problem. I won't go into too much detail, but you know, the idea between finding your code and then actually getting it to run is, is, is what we're trying to tackle. And CodeOcean actually tries to, um, doesn't try, it does remove all those steps so that researchers, when they get actually to the code, uh, can click a, a run button and just execute the code in the, in the cloud seamlessly. And I think uh, you know, we're really, really focused as an organization on uh, the UX, on the user experience. And we spend a, a tremendous amount of time uh, looking at it from, from the perspective of the user, uh, bo both the researcher and, and, and the consuming uh, user. And that can be, you know, it could be a lot of different things, including funders, uh, other researchers. Um, and basically this is the state of affairs right now. And, and this is another one of these problems that we're tackling is that you sort of have the, 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 the body of, of science being written up in journals and be communicating journals and then, and then code and software sort of in, in another area. And it forces researchers to, to sort of leave uh, in one environment to go to the other uh, to get it all into one place. And so what we have uh, done is created a widget so after a researcher creates this computational environment where they've put all their files, they've put their input data, they've, they've created the executability, they get their code up and running, um, and, and other researchers can come and just press a run button. We've also created a widget in the same way that YouTube has a widget that uh, uh, you know, researchers can just take a, a little bit of embed code and then dump it into environments. And I'm gonna hope that this actually works. I'm gonna click here. So here's an article in F1000 where the researcher is, is, has written a body of literature. And then at the very bottom here, um, he's, he's embedded the actual code environment, mm -hmm. right? And so here you can just uh, click here. The researcher can look at the, the, the code right in the point of the article, right? They can uh, look at the data sets that were inputted. Uh, other users can go then and they can download the files if they want to. Right? They can actually go here and actually edit the code if they want to augment the code, right? And uh, we've, we've actually compressed it and the results panel is here. And if uh, uh, users want to, they can look obviously at the results files uh, and they can actually uh, download the results if they want. Um, but, but best of all, if I'm, if I'm a researcher and I've come here and I've read the article and I think this is really neat, I can actually run the code. And now I'm actually gonna run the code in the cloud and, and, and it's going to, uh, as you can see from the far right hand side, we're actually running the code and it's going to render the results. Uh, and these are the output files. It's going to take a little while, obviously, it's running the algorithm in the cloud. Right. So um, jumping over, so this is uh, Code Ocean embedded directly into the research article, right? Now I'm going to jump over directly into the, into the Code Ocean site because if I'm in that article, and I'm, I've, I've arrived at the, uh, the, the algorithm, I've decided that I really want to do more, right, than just run the code and, and see the results. I want to start really playing around with the code. I might want to go over to the Code Ocean platform and then I'll click over here and it will shoot me over to the Code Ocean platform. Once again, very, very similar to, 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 uh, to, um, to YouTube. And then when I'm in there, I can actually, um, uh, you know, you can see a much larger view once again, this gives you a great idea. The, the code files and, and the software are on the, on the top left. Uh, the input data is on, 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 the, on the bottom left. Um, if you want, you can bring in uh, other files. You can bring in new input files, rerun the code against those new input files, um, and, 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 and um, find different results as well, right? Going back to my dashboard, 
for researchers that are, are, are actually working on code that hasn't yet published yet, and this is a particular example right now uh, of something uh, that we've loaded in but isn't actually published yet. Um, oh, I've, I've actually chosen the wrong thing. That is actually published. Here we go back. Um, it's an unfamiliar computer, right? I can actually invite other researchers as well to collaborate on the code, right? And here I can manage my collaborators on the code, right? And I can give them either edit or view rights on the code. And once the code's up and running and it's to everyone's satisfaction, uh, then we can just press the publish button and publish it, right? Um, and then going back to my, my uh, dashboard, um, if I want to share code as well, get that embed, just gonna show you where that embed code is to put in that widget. Um, I have this little, something that's uh, hiding, just gonna try to move it. Oh, here, there we go. You can't see it, but oh, you can, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The old, uh, right? So if I want to take this embed code, take this embed code, and then I can dump it into my personal website. I can dump it wherever I want into the published article, um, and uh, and so on and so on, right? And so some people are are adding in um, uh, the widget directly into articles. Other people are just putting links directly to the Code Ocean site, right? So if I can go. Mm. Um, now, um, I wanted to also show you a details page. And what's really interesting about the detail page is where we capture all the metadata around a particular computational environment. We assign a DOI um, to the whole entire computational environment as well. Um, and this allows, and we freeze version the computational environment to the piece of published research. So if, if, uh, if uh, a researcher wanted, oh, wanted to uh, create a derivative, uh, others wanted to create a derivative work, they can. They can also create a versioning as well, but it will be assigned a new DOI and brought to the article. But just to, to show you, there's this linkage between the, the, the computational environment and the published piece of research, right? And so here we're going and you'll see there's an algorithms tab here and it will have the algorithm, right, attached to the published research. That's it. Uh, we have a, a session at one where we'll be getting really deep into this, uh, led by Shahar. Uh, if you have any questions, it's great to take them. So, so I saw that you have the import from GitHub. Yep. So, so it must take a snapshot of any kind of code, like, uh, and then keeps its own internal copy of things in GitHub, and then any kind of updates you would execute through the GitHub so much managing code within, uh, within So, code, right? so th that, that, so what you're, what I think what you're asking is if there was a, a change in the GitHub yeah. uh, code, yeah. would it automatically, so no, not, not, what you're doing is it's a, it's an import function from GitHub. You, we're, we're, we're trying to, it's a reproducibility environment, right? So we freeze version the code. So it's merely a way of, of bringing code into, from GitHub into the code ocean environment. Which I think is a good thing. All right, all right, thank you. Right, yeah. Kind of related on this, the youth side. I, I hear you have some long-term identifiers you can snapshot specific yeah. sets. Yeah. Um, like when you're using the widget on the website and you click the link, yeah. you get the provenance of everything you just played with on that in that widget when you get to the main website. Okay. Or is there any way to navigate to it, or are you going to the snapshot to the article? At that point? So you're talking about these these artifacts yeah, that you, were you created a new run while we were yeah. watching. Is there any way to get to that from the main website? So if it's your dashboard, yes, your runs are recorded. Uh, if, yeah. I mean, if this is not your paper and you modified something, made a run by to you now. Correct to me, to okay. me, right? Uh, so if I was a new user going to this particular algorithm, I wouldn't see my runs or my augmentations to the runs, right? But I, as as a user, would, right? And it counts to my storage as well. Right. I'm gonna have to. I, I'm gonna have to bring in bring in the big guns for that one. Right. <laughs> the guy with less hair. <laughs> um, yeah. So so. 
to your question, uh, as long as you're uh, running the same algorithm, you'll get the same version that's uh, facilitated by Docker caching. That's a natural fit. And then when you publish your algorithm, we actually archive that image. So anybody who's running uh, the same algorithm will get the same version. Um, if you want to update, you can also go into, I, I don't think I want to touch this computer, <laughs> but you can go. <laughs> You can go into the run environment and, and change the version uh, manually. Yeah. What comes against your view time and then storage? Do those, do those cache images come against your like five gigabits of storage? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. The question was what counts against your storage and compute time? Um, there's actually a, f a frequently asked question on, on that, and you can, you can read that, but the, the short answer is that uh, all the data is counted against your storage. None of the image or the caching stuff, all that is, uh, you know, is, uh, is on us. And then keep those images for how long? We'll keep them for uh, indeterminate, like uh, for indefinitely. Uh, for the published algorithm, that's actually, uh, like for the non-published algorithm, that's more of a, an op optimization. For the published algorithms, we guarantee that image is going to be stored indefinitely. So the published ones have guarantees that others are yeah. not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it, guys. So you yeah, see, nice. Notion and the 202 network.